Father, we thank you and appreciate you for a time like this. Thank you, Father, because the entrance of your word giveth life to the simple. Father, we thank you because of what you are set to do for us this morning. Speak expressly to our hearts. Open our minds. Help us that we will learn from you this morning. I will speak as an oracle. I will not speak with what I have in mind or the thought that is in me. But the Holy Spirit impressed on my mind is only what will be said this morning. Thank you, Father, because at the end, we will glorify your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. What happens when we praise God? One of the things that I noticed that happens when we praise God is that we are going to be healthy. Just the small dance, I danced there, and they asked me to come and make an announcement. I was already breathing and parting. So when you dance well in your closet, it's a, it's a means of exercise. Psalm 150, verse 1 to 6, I read from the New Living Translation. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise him his, praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of rams on. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. The text given by the choir Yesterday, we made the foundation about it in Psalm 7, verse 17, that says, I will give thanks to the Lord for his righteousness. I will sing to his praises, to his name, to the name of the Most High. And then we made a construct about praise, thanksgiving, and worship, the connection and interrelation. And we looked at my own perspective from my experience and gleanings from the scripture. And then we thought also about the theologians to tell us what are the connections about it. One of the things we said is that our worship and our praise should be in truth and in worship. And then it should not be fake because when we don't do it in the spirit, we are only exercising emotions. And it's not going to stand the test of time. It's going to fizzle away like vapor. And we also emphasize that we should do it in truth. That when we don't do it in truth, it's just a joyless legalism. And then worship is a lifestyle. And then we look at when does our praise or thanks becomes worship. Maybe it has also be part of it right along. And then we started the, 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 the um, um, observation and application from Psalm 150. And then in the whole passage, seven things or six or thereabout that we're going to be considering. I just touch it briefly because the essence of this topic is the potency of praising God. And then we'll spend more time of sharing with us because mighty awesome things happen when we praise God. So we started yesterday with the person to be praised. And that was given to us in the psalm we read, stanza one, that said, praise the Lord. is God that should be praised. And then I shared about the names of God with us. And then we talked about also yesterday, the people commanded to praise. And then just like Reverend has said, I mean, Pastor Noah, Noah said, us, we are his pastures. We are his people, the sheep of his pastures. And then we looked at the praise, place to praise. Where should we praise God? Praise him in his sanctuary, praise him in his firmament. He said heavenly places. And then we we're able to realize that we are the sanctuary. We are the people to praise God. And then we can also praise God in gathering like this. And then we have come to Zion. We have come to Mount Zion. We have come to a place that speaks better things than that of Abel. So this morning we are going to be now considering the purpose of praise. The practice of praise. And then we look at the period of praise. And then we will now delve into the main topic that talks about the, the products, or you call it proceeds of praise. What happens when we praise God? Thank you very much. So because of the people that were not here, so that's why I did the summary. And then we are moving into the purpose of praising God. Why do I need to praise God? 
Because you know we defined praise yesterday as the ultimate goal of praise is to God. And then in verse 2, he said, praise him for his mighty works. Praise him, praise his unequal greatness. So there is no one compared to him. There is, there is no one equal to him. So we can't be saying he's greater than the greatest. Who is the greatest that you are comparing him with? So be careful of the songs we sing that are not having strong theological background. I'm now close to theologians. So theology is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you can't compare with anybody. So the reason why you need to praise God because he's worthy of our praise. Second Samuel 22 verse 4 says, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. Great is the Lord and most worthy of our praise is greatness. No one can fathom. Psalm 145 verse 3. He now says, let's come before him with singing. Let's come before him with singing. So there's nobody compared to him. So the purpose of our praise primarily is because we have a God that is unrivaled. We have a God that is unequaled. We have a God that cannot be compared. We have a God that is so powerful. We have a God that does things that are unimaginable. So they told me while growing up in faith, that you tell, you don't tell your pro, you don't tell God how big your problem is. You tell your problem how big your God is. So, the reason why we should praise God, that's the purpose, is also that is a command. The purpose of praise is to acknowledge Him for His acts and proclaim His greatness. I said He's a miracle worker, destiny changer, God of possibility, nothing too hard for Him to do. I am the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me to do? I don't know if you understand that. So I tell myself and I know that whatever I face is not too hard for God to do. No one is compared to him. Have you, have you talked about his exceeding greatness? He makes a way when there seems to be no way. And he's worthy of our praise. I just pictured myself when the Israelites were passing through the Red Sea. Ah, the battle is behind. And the Red Sea behind. I'm not sure my faith can be muzzled up at that moment. But God said, don't worry. These people you see, you anger and see them no more. Did it happen or not? There was a miracle that happened and departed the sea and they walked on dry land. Abba, the greatness of God. That's the reason why we need to worship him. We should also know that we need to worship because whatever we face is transient. But the God that we have to praise is constant. It changes not. Is the same. Forever the same. But this situation is not the same. If he has our daddies and our mom is here, there are things they've passed through and they look back. When someone like me runs to them and says, this is what I'm going to Calm down, calm down. It's a process. It's a phase. It will be over. So God is constant. It changes not, but changes things. So that's one of the purpose of praising him. But I want to tell you that praising God is also a sacrifice. It could be hurting sometimes. And then, no matter how hurting it could be to praise God, it's not about your feelings. It's not about your condition or challenges or the situation or moment you are in. It becomes a real sacrifice when you praise God when it's difficult. When we praise God when it's difficult. So the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10 that we should hold tightly without wavering. He said, hold tightly on wavering to the hope that you have found because God can be trusted. So if the one that is telling me to praise him is giving me an affirmation that I can be trusted, what am I waiting for? We should also be careful that when what you are praising God for becomes a reality, you now forget God. Deuteronomy 6, 11 to 12 said the houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig. And you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. Where well, you have eaten your fill in the land. Verse 12, he says, be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Many of us are quick to forget what we went through before the testimonies of what God is doing in our lives. So be careful not to be too comfortable 
to praise God. It's not only when the going is good that we should praise God. We should also praise God in trying times. Purpose of praising God. Number five, the practice of praise. In the place we have read, Psalm 150, verse 3 and 2, tells us to praise him. You know, the version I read, I'm sure, I'm not even sure that I can explain to my boy what his sounding cymbals are. I know our daddies can, can tell us. I tried to look for the Yoruba name of cymbals too. I, I, um, I struggled to get it. But the truth of the matter is that if you look at it in the contemporary context of this scripture, this that we are doing is praise. And I want to put a note here that you are praising God with your mouth, your voice, and your hands alone. It's also instruments. But I can see from this passage that praising God is loud. It's not silent. You praise him with cymbals. The sound of cymbals, the way it sounds, is not, it's not simple. So we should praise God aloud. Mommy shared with us about President of Kenya. That said, when we should pray, we're praising God. Some people come to church and come and watch people praising God and see the error on the way they are praising God. I remember the Reverend telling us about somebody that wanted to jump prayer band and came to meet Reverend Ogumala and said, These people are praying so much. I said, Did you go and see how they are praying or you want to go and join prayer band and pray too? Are you coming to God to praise God or you want to watch people that are praising God in the way you feel you should praise God and they are not praising Him the way you feel you should praise God? Be careful that you don't make your own convictions a counters to become a doctrine for people to follow. That's why I have a problem with Christianity. Your encounters, your experiences of God. You want to make it a doctrine on people. I beg to differ because I study my Bible. I'm sure if these things are not in the scriptures, we will not be singing this song. I mean, with instruments we are here. I'm sure probably I'll be put on that discipline for standing in front of the church and dancing. Who dare you? But the Bible says we should praise him with dancing. I tell people I don't know the way to club. I don't go to joints. The only place I have opportunity to dance is in the presence of God. And somebody will tell me I should not. You must be joking. It is you that sees the style that I dance. And go and say it's this type of dance. I don't know your type of dance because I hardly even listen to those kind of musics. I listen to the music of gospel music. So people of God. It is loud to praise God. So don't be coward. Don't be boxed into a case. And for the youths, let me share with you my experience. My father will not dance in church, no matter how. Baba Dola will only clap his hands. But mind you, whenever we get back home, he will bless us, credit us. You guys dance well. I'm proud of you. You are doing well. So youths, don't be deceived that your parents are not dancing and you're also not dancing. I'm sure they will also want you to dance. So dancing is part of praising God. It is scriptural and spiritual to dance in the presence of God. Be careful also not to be able to come and judge and condemn people that come to dance and praise God. Micah did and the consequences was not reversible. Don't put judgment on your head when you see people dance and praise God in the presence of God. So the practice of praise is with instruments, is with dancing, is with Simbas is with shouting, is with loud. You know, sometimes when we see the energy of Kelechi, I said, this bo brother, please be coming down. Because he understood the practice of praise. And that's why you can see that we need to praise God. So the practice of praise, according to the scripture, is with cymbals, with instruments. If you want to use your own voice and hands, to God be the glory, we celebrate you. But don't condemn us that we are dancing in the house of God so that you don't bring judgment on yourself. And then the period of praise. When should we praise God? The seasons and time to praise God. Continually, consistently, and committedly. Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be upon my mouth. Be in my mouth. Psalm 145 verse 1. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. So the season, the period to praise God is not timed. It's not a special place. Every day of your life should be to praise God. Hallelujah. So come to the crux of the matter, which is what happens when we praise God? I was 
just studying and meditating about it and the story of Paul and Silas, they pray, they pray, they sang, they sang, the came down, Paul and Silas, they pray, they pray, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down. I have about 12 or 13 points to share with us briefly. Today is not a, a lot of words and teachings. It just, I'll just mention it, take note of it, and then you can begin to experience, expect it to manifest in your life. And I trust you that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. In Acts 16, verse 23 to 40, they were, they were, you know, you can imagine doing ministry. They were working, doing the ministry of God. They were committed to do what God has sent them to do. And lo and behold, they were caught and they, they picked them because they healed somebody that was actually giving people money. And they said that this man, we are going to suffer them. And they put them in prison. And they prayed. They sang praises. And what happened was amazing. The prison began to shake. So one of the first things that happens, and thanks to a daughter that read the scripture yesterday, when the people gathered to sing, and then they sang in one voice, also there, there was trumpets. There was instruments that they used to sing. In one voice, singing one thing. Give thanks to the Lord for his good and his love endures forever. The reign of his presence is evident when we praise God. The reign of God's presence is evident when we praise God. The shaking of the prison was not man-made. It was the angels and the supernatural manifestation of God that made the prison to shake. So number one, the reign of God's presence is manifested when we praise God. Number two, there's a release. Freedom, deliverance comes when we praise God. Now, what do you think about the presence of God? Before I leave number one, the presence of God brings, in the presence of God there is liberty. That will show me the path of life or in the presence there is fullness of life. And at I read that there are pleasures. There are pleasures also in the presence of God. Healing, encounters, revelation, transformation. So one, the reign of his presence. Two, release. There's freedom, deliverance. The prison door was broken. It's unimaginable. I told my wife, I said, well, I don't think me, I will stay again to do any other thing. <laughs> when God has come with his presence and he shook the foundation of the prison, and lo and behold, the door is open. I will move out. But when, be careful that the result of the praise of God in your life, you don't so change yourself. Be careful that when the result of praise begins to manifest in your life, you are quick to celebrate it without following through the process. That was redemption. Number three, the man that came and removed his sword. In that passage, we are, we are considering Acts 16, 23 to 40. Removed his sword and said he wanted to kill himself. I'm not, Apostle Paul shouted, no, we are still here. If he had gone out, ran away because of the opportunity, the salvation of that man would be on his head. Three, redemption. Four, restoration. The people that put them in prison realize that the, the, the jail has been brought broken. So they don't want them to start announcing that there was a miracle that happened. They now say, please, let them go. Restore them to their freedom level. Restoration comes when we praise God. What is it that you have lost? Or seemingly seems that has been lost, but you think cannot be restored. I tell you, change those prayers. Bitterness and hurt is restored when we praise God. You put yourself in bondage when you are bitter about God. You put yourself in bondage when you're angry about God. Just praise him. There's a song in my language, that means the power of Jesus is there. Jesus has not gone anywhere. Restoration from discouragement, despondency, and depression is restored. The opposite, an antonym of, of uh, praise is reproach. So reproach is rolled away in the place of praise. Your shame is rolled away. Your limitations, humiliation is rolled away in the place of praise. And then there is a raise. God raises us when we praise him. He lifts us up when we praise him. He promotes us when we praise him. Our spirit is lifted and we are raised above any limitation. And there is increase when we praise God. Another thing is that there is revival. 
our faith, our praise revives our soul, rekindles our faith, reassures our hope, and reawakens our love for God. Take that again. Praise revives the soul, rekindles our faith, reassures our, po our hope, and reawakens our love for God. Another thing that praises us is that he remembers us. There is this sound we used to do. I grew up in uh, Yoruba church. So there is this call to watch, I mean, um, responsive reading we do. I think it's Psalm 138 or something that we always just be saying, for his love and just for That's just what the congregation will be singing. One thing that struck me in that passage is, thanks be to God who remembers us in our lowly estate. Maybe a lot of you grew up in the city. I grew up in a low estate, but I remember where you brought me from. Praise makes us remember where we are coming from. And also praise makes God remember you. There was a play we did some time ago in Elori. They were both complaining. Just like what is happening. The community were complaining, complaining, complaining. But a, a family came singing praises to the king. And the king was down, casted. That, ah, why is this happening in my time? When he heard the songs of praise from that family coming from the door of his palace, he stood up. He neglected the people complaining. So God also remembers you when we pray. Praise also brings about recovery and victory. I remember the song of Miriam in Exodus 15, 20. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider, he has, he has thrown into the sea. Hallelujah. Just to check that you are following me. Amen. The us and the riders was thrown into the sea. So there is recovery when we praise God. 2 Corinthians 20, 22. Said, now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Moshea, who came against Judah, and they were defeated. So there is victory when we praise God. God reveals himself in the place of praise. There is revelation. That's number 10. Revelation comes to us when we praise God. Praise redefines a perspective about God. When you praise God, there's a redefinition of who God is to you when we praise God. Praise brings about rejoicing. And I remember when I was meditating and that thing came to me, it was the last team for last, last year that said, though the sheep does not, I mean, the cat does, the pen does not have sheep. There were a lot of issues at that time, as it were today. But I said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be glad in the joy of my salvation. What would God do when you rejoice with him? He gives me strength. So when you rejoice in pray, in the place of praise, God gives you strength. And then praise is a resource for evangelism. Psalm 40 verse 3 says, He has given me a new song to sing a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done. And be amazed. Many will see and put their trust in him. Another version. They will put their trust in the Lord. Many will see and be amazed. The last line says they will put their trust in you. So remember, praise is a reign of God's presence. It releases us, gives us freedom and deliverance. Praise redeems us, restores us, rolls away reproach, raises us, revives us, remembers us, causes us to recover, reveals God to us in another perspective brings about rejoicing is a resource and finally when you praise god you'll be at rest i remember i was burdened one night and i was so heavy in my mind and i didn't know what to do i just switched on my phone and i was playing music and the music played and i slept off the body left praise brings about rest i will conclude with what dr Rian father says he says, praise is indeed a potent and restorative tool. It changes us for the better by refocusing our affections, realigning our priorities, and restoring our souls. Our spirit becomes more pliable, open, and receptive to receiving to God's Holy Spirit. Re receptive to receiving to God's Holy Spirit. Let us be more intentional, consistent, 
and passionate in a quest to praise God from whom all blessings flows. Shall we just bow our heads and pray and talk to God and say, God, I want to praise you more. I shared yesterday that I discovered that a lot of us pray more than praise, including myself. So I've made up my mind by part of being intentional to always ensure that I praise God more. And then look at the results. What happens when we praise God? The potency of God's power in praise. Talk to God and say to God that God, I want to praise you more. I want you to do for me the potency, the product, proceed and profit of praise. Thank you, Father, for your word to rose this morning from your servant. Help us to experience the potency of praise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Our praises before now and the one we've been doing now, O Lord, and even beyond today, be accepted unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.